Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Shmon, talking about Pokemon. Yes, I love Pokemon. I love my golds, I love my emeralds, I love my rubies and my sapphires, I love the fire reds, and I love the leaf greens. And I love everything in between, honestly. But there's not between leaf green and fire red, what am I saying? Anyway, I love Pokemon. But I want to talk a little bit about things uh, that are coming up in Scarlet and Violet. We have to talk about them because, firstly, I'm kinda hype. I love Pokemon. Told you already five seconds ago. Telling you again, me loving Pokemon. But let's talk about competitive. Now, Sword and Shield were very exceptional games. First off, they had amazing Pokemon. I love like a lot of the designs and Rillaboom, that Grassy Surge, amazing ability. You had Colossal, that was also an amazing Pokemon and with Dynamax, it could be used as well. There were a lot of things that were very cool to see. There was, however, an issue. Dynamax is interesting because you can Dynamax any Pokemon, but because you can Dynamax any Pokemon, that means some Pokemon will be better at Dynamax than others, of course. You can play with this, but some Pokemon that are Dynamax are clearly better than others. For example, Torquan and Groudon both have the Drought ability, but Groudon can use this way more effectively than Torquan can, which gives an issue of centralization as well, because some Pokemon with Dynamax are absolutely bonkers to a kiss crit kiss was made which was hell on earth because every dynamax move with the 130 base power would crit you as well and with the dlc they released the first thing that came comes to my mind that i found very very annoying and that thing being urshifu now looking at a uh, competitive scene especially vgc because that is the main way to play Pokemon according to the Pokemon company itself. Because that's what they promote. That's what they give money to. VGC players, here is your event. And stuff like that. Smogon isn't really looked at by the Pokemon company itself. But Smogon is very valid. I love Smogon. Love me 6v6s. But they have to fix the timer. Anyway. Urshifu breaks every rule of freaking Pokemon, of the VGC. You know what's good in VGC? The move protect, why? Well, when you have two Pokemon on each other side and two of your opponent's Pokemon decide that they're gonna both attack into one Pokemon, if you protect that one Pokemon, that means your other Pokemon, Pokemon number two, is free to do whatever it wants. That is called defensive play. That means you can do something about the situation. You have other options like switching as well, but having a move that lets you stay in still, like, and maybe set up, for example, Tailwind, so your second Pokemon that protected last turn can now obliterate with some other move, that's really good! And then you have to start predicting if they're gonna protect or not, which gives balance. Now, Urshifu ignores that. Urshifu don't care. Urshifu goes right through that. You know what? You know what? That's not strong enough. Let's give him a stat move that always crits as well. What? <laughs> all right. We have, like, all right, looking at Urshifu, right? Looking at Urshifu. 130 base attack and a Wicked Blow being 80 base power. You're thinking to yourself, hey, you know what? 80 base power? Not bad, bad. But it results always in a critical hit, which is so much stronger. Which is crazy. Thank God it's not Gem 4 crit, like uh, early crits, because like, could you imagine Wicked Blow being double base power, 160 base? <gasps> I would die. But that is one of the issues that Sony Shield has presented. There's a lot of Pokemon that are exceptionally better than the other ones. Ever played Smogon during the time that uh, Rigfish was alive? I hope you were en enjoying using Seismitoad because you had nothing else. It was an issue, all right? That's just it. It's just such, it's not that he's broken. It's such a good move. And especially with strong jaw boosting it as well. Very good. You have Urshifu that ignores all the rules, but then honestly, I can live with these. If these were the only ones, I feel I could kind of live with these. But no, they invented a Pokemon on top of a Pokemon. You know, if anyone says Dugtree was a lazy design, fine. But like, you can't tell me Calyrex isn't a lazy design because they just put two Pokemon on top of each other, all right? If I put a Gallade on top of an Arcanine, that's not a new Pokemon. I'm just saying. <laughs> Anyway, Calyrex, Shadow Rider, and Calyrex Ice Rider. First off, 
What the fuck are these stats, bro? Like, uh, 165 special attack. All right. But Calyrex, kind of a glass cannon probably, right? Well, 80 base defense is a bad. 100 B special defense ain't bad either. 100 HP ain't terrible either. What I'm trying to say is like, this Pokemon is so fast and still bulky enough to take hits as well. Like, of course, if you touch it with a dark type move, it will get obliterated, but it's still bad. Like, it's still so good of a Pokemon. And the thing is, in Dynamax format, it won't be that noticeable. But we had one format where we didn't have Dynamax and Calyrex kind of ate ass, bro. Holy shit. And not only Calyre, like, uh, the Shadow Rider, Ice Rider too! Ice Rider can put up Trick Room! Ice Rider is still doing good as well, in Dynamax as well, because it, uh, it doesn't have speed, but it has defenses! Holy heck, it does! And 165 base attack is also very, pretty nutty. The other thing about it is that both these Pokemon have a 120 base power move that's 100% accurate. Now, name one other move that has that. Generally, what privilege do you need to have two abilities, busted stats, and a move that helps you, that, that helps you so much by not missing? Like, don't get me wrong, Kyogre has Water Spout, but that is HP adjacent. If you lower the, uh, the HP of a Kyogre, it gets weaker. This is always 120 base. Oh, yeah, but you can just switch it to Dark Type. Yes, you can. But what if you have a Fighting Type next to it that just fucking close combats your Dark Type or something? Things like that, you know? You gotta think about that. It's not healthy. That's what I'm trying to see. It's definitely not in a meta where there won't be any Dynamax. And same for Calyrex Ice Rider, it's just, oh, God. And with that DLC, there also came Regieleki. Now, Regieleki, 100 special attack. Is all right. 200 speed, what the fuck? <laughs> Why are we going to such extremes? Like, don't get me wrong. I like, I like having broken Pokemon, but like, why? Is it literally the fastest thing alive? And does it have a 1.5 multiplier with his electric moves? What? That mean, I like, I don't, Thunderbolt 90 base power is now uh, fast math, 135 base power from 100 special attack, but it also has a 100 base, uh, like 100 physical attack. So you can run wild charge for what whatever reason as well. Which is also 90 base, but like, it's still good, you can switch it up. It's so good, and then it has Electro Web. It, it absolutely shat on Coco. There's no reason to use Tapu Coco anymore. Tapu Coco gave you electric, like, gave you electric search so you don't fall asleep. But guess what, Dynamax, give you electric search when you use a max move too. Doesn't really matter here, does it? But it's so disgustingly good it's too dang fast is what i'm trying to say so we have okay let's rephrase so you have legendaries that have two abilities one of which being ignoring berries so like if you want to have a super effective berry or something or citrus berry no can't use that and the other one boosting their best stat as well so they have beast boost plus that if it was not a nerf but like a shittier ability god i would have taken it Honestly, I would have given taken anything at this point. You have Draco Fish, who, uh, if it goes faster, Fish is rent powerful. That's it. That's mainly it. And you didn't have a lot of switch-ins in, uh, on Smogon, so like, and Choice Ban was really dangerous and stuff. But then you have the Urshifus, the Bear Cups, that ignore every rule of Protect. Like, f look at Faint, for example. Faint was a cool move. You know what the base power of Faint is? Not that. Not fucking 80. Faint is a move to use to go through Protect as well. It's 30 base power. You know what that means? 
One Pokemon needs to faint and the other one needs to attack the Pokemon that is protecting. Or else you don't do any damage. Urshifu ignores that. And like, if you wanted to ignore that, that's one thing. But like, you don't, you're not giving defensive options. This is really a Oonga Boonga meta, which was kind of annoying. And Dynamax was something like that as well, where you could snowball into just winning. Like, ah, it feels like I'm shitting a lot on this, but like, I did enjoy watching um, the VGC and stuff. But, goddamn, some of these Pokemon are not okay, man. But then, we don't, we haven't even talked about the biggest issue. Close your eyes and imagine this. You have your Pokemon Dynamaxed, and which doubles its HP, but you have a legendary Pokemon that can use a move that doubles in power if the target is Dynamaxed. You're thinking to yourself, wait, that's pretty good. So you have like a counter to it, yeah. But the base power of that move is 100 base. It's a steel type move, so stab as well. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, so that's, that's fine, right? That's not that's not the worst. It's just uh, good. But imagine it on a Pokemon with 170 base power. I don't I don't know how to explain this. There's one other Pokemon that has a higher base power attack, and that's Kartana. Now Kartana has a lot of issues as well. What being the issue? It being fail as heck. Like his defense is great, but special defense is not great. Absolutely not. His typing, pretty decent defensively, because Grass Steel, you have Ferrothorn. But Zation, Fairy Steel, is such a nutty typing. It is so good defensively and offensively. I like Behemoth Blade being so powerful, that's one thing. Plus you have Play Rough, you know, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So you get walls, you, get, you should get walled by Steel types, right? No, no. The man gets multiple fighting type moves. Close combat, yeah. All right, what if I want to boost my defense? Uh, what if I want to boost my defense so that close combat doesn't kill me anymore? Well, it has secret sword for that, which makes sense because it's holding a sword. You know what? I ain't even mad about that. But those three moves are already pretty decent. Okay, so 170 base attack, that's, that's pretty good. And looking at the other stats, defensively, 115, 115, <laughs> defense and special defense. That's, that's pretty good. Oh my god, it's speed. 148, it outspeeds most of the meta as well. So, it can kill Pokemon without giving me a chance to move as well, is what you're seeing. And then the one Game Freak guy came in and he just said, What if we gave this thing and another attack boost? What? <laughs> Interpret Sword raises its attack by one stage again. So instead of one just 170 base, which is already freaking nutty, it gets another attack boost. Now you might be saying to yourself, oh, but if Kartana gets a kill, it gets a thing as well. Yeah, that's if, if it kills. You have options before it happens. Zation, it comes in, bro. You ain't ready. And then you have Zamazenta Crown, which is not great. Looking, looking at Zamazenta, it's absolutely sad. And abysmal. It's 130 base, it's one uh, attack, eh, you know, and 145 and 145 special defense. The defensive Pokemon has a shit defensive typing. Fighting Steel. Fighting is shit. I'm sorry to say, fighting is not a good defensive typing. If Zacian have fighting type, God, I could I could understand. Like, at least we had a better way to killing Zacian. But goddamn, Zamazenta got nothing. It didn't even get the one move that was introduced in this generation that uses defense as a sort of attacking move. Body press. It's a fighting move. It doesn't even get it. Why won't you learn this? <laughs> Why? And see, all these powerful mons, that's one thing. In the Dynamax meta, that's also one thing because the HPs are double. So you need, you need sometimes to be able to still chip and attack these. But... In the next generation, there won't be Dynamax. There will be type changes. Like, you can change your type with crystallizing, and that's fine. I'm actually looking forward to that. But if they're going to introduce these Pokemon again, these need to be nerfed somehow. They need something. I don't, like, for example, like, the easiest way to do so is uh, take away Zacian Sword and take away his ability. For example, 
If Zijin doesn't have a sword, it's 130 base power. Uh, but honestly, it's still pretty good because it's then only singular fairy typing. But the other thing, because like it still got banned to Ubers in Smogon. Uh, not even Ubers, uh, anything goes. Like Rayquaza invented uh, anything goes. But Zijin definitely perfected it because holy shit, he got banned twice. So yeah, for example, Calyrex, goddamn, Astral Barrage, make it 80 base and accuracy fucking zero. I don't care, nerf that shit. <sighs> Dracovish is fine, in all honesty. I don't really, I really don't mind Dracovish. Weirdly enough, I really don't mind. It's the other ones. Maybe it's because uh, of the other extremes, I guess. Urshifu, why does it ignore every rule there is? You know, why do, why does this have to happen? Reggie Alecki, instead of 1.5 multiplier, make it 1.2. I got that. And also give Zamazenta a cookie and body press. That's what I'm trying to say, alright? <sighs> see, I went on a little rant there, but these are things that I really want for, for the competitive scene. Because, like, uh, I love competitive Pokemon. And uh, I love playing VGC, I love playing TCG, I love playing Smogon. I love. Everything Pokemon related, holy shit, I'm a freak. <laughs> but the main point that I'm trying to give is these Pokemon aren't balanced right now. Uh, they're not balanced in a meta where there won't be any Dynamax. But speaking of competitive as well, I want to be able to play 6v6. Fix the darn timer.